YouTube, what's good? Singe, back at it with another video. Or as you probably know me now as the real Singe, because there's a lot of fakes trying to run around and be me, so I had to put, you know, the, the real. And then it also sounded good. Anyway, we're here today with a Throne and Liberty video. Uh, pretty soon I'll be dropping a build video on my Crossbow Daggers build. I know that this is a Crossbow Daggers guy because I've seen a couple of his videos pop up in my feed, and I think I watched like two of them. He's not a bad guy at all. He's actually pretty good. Um... Does he know everything about the game? No, but nobody does. The game just came out globally, and apparently we are already a week and a half, maybe two weeks into the game, and he's already dropping a pay-to-win, already ruined Throne of Liberty video. Um, I'm going to start this out by saying that I don't have enough time to sit here all day and criticize this guy, and I won't try. I'm going to try to be nice here, because most of you know me as the doctor of yapology, and... I also have a very over-analytical degree, because I over-analyze everything any and everything and i'm probably extremely critical but i'm going to say this to start out there is a very thick line between pay for convenience and pay to win and i'm going to start out by saying this game is pay for convenience it is not pay to win so let's hear what he's saying and uh hopefully he's not saying anything too outlandish or giving a redundant conversation so my inner monologue told me I was never going to make this video and I never wanted to make this video because I've actually been enjoying myself on Throne of Liberty for the past week and a half, well, probably two weeks now because I bought early access. But when I saw Shroud's opinion hit my YouTube recommendation saying that the pay to win in Throne of Liberty isn't that bad, I, I felt like I needed to say something because there's no way that this man is saying that pay to win is good. I mean, it's not for sure that they'll bring pay to win back. It's not for sure that they'll bring it back into the game, um, but they should. But they should. Shit. Who the fuck does he think he is? I think he's you Who the piece of shit. What? Who do you think you are? And I think that's part hey, of the reason, yo, like, with hey, yo, Kai and Kevin Hart will never not be funny. Listen, I'm gonna put this into very uh, basic terms for you. Shroud, stay in your own lane because I'm pretty much. I I'm sure that everybody can agree with me on saying the twenty-five thousand dollars to us is a dollar to you. So you're in the same boat as like Elon Musk buying Twitter because nobody would listen to his personal profile. Now he's spewing Republican propaganda all over the entire pro uh, all over the entire platform, forcing everybody to see it because he's at the head of the company. Listen, while you're not doing anything to that extreme of stupidity, saying that a game needs to have pay to win, when again twenty five thousand dollars to us is like a dollar to you is extremely inconsiderate to the entire gaming community and while i'm glad that you enjoyed the game respectfully shut up man stay in your own lane you got more money than half the people who play the game you don't need to be anybody talking about pay to win because pay to win to you is extremely out of band for everybody else so back to the video man with my main enjoyment with Run of Liberty, I love the game to death right now, and I'm I'm kind of addicted to it. The the only thing that falls flat is if you want to maintain competitiveness and you want to actually play the game. Now that we're a week and a little bit so into the free release, we're starting to realize more and more all the co-op dungeons are getting gear gated to the point where people are making the dungeons. You have to be 2,500 plus, or you have to be 3,000 plus to join my party. And if you don't, you're just kind of suffering with people in random matchmaking queue. And not even on top of that, you have people in the mega guilds that are spending thousands upon thousands of dollars and dominating servers that you're on and there's a lot of people i know that are like dude my server's getting dominated maybe i just picked the wrong server well if everybody is saying that you probably did not pick the wrong server we probably picked the wrong game and i think hey yo man where this guy come from brother oh okay listen to combat the not even to combat but to give you a very constructive rebuttal on the first part where you described gear gating it's very obvious to me that you have made it to end game and you are used to games dropping things on your lap. I say that to say this, if you're on the party board and you're looking at, if you're on the party board and you're looking at pre-made parties and those parties are requesting that you have a gear score higher than 2,500, then make your own party, man, because you are able to play at your own pace and nobody's stopping you from making your own party. Why on earth you're running around complaining about people having outlandish requirements is beyond me. Like, I, I don't get it. it like th that. It, I'm not going to say it's stupid because I do understand where he's coming from. Twenty five hundred is way too high 
to have as a requirement this early in the game. However, it's dumb to run around and expect everyone to have their requirements lowered to fit your needs. I mean, tell me when I'm telling lies here. It's a dual street of stupidity. You got one side that's too high and one side that's entitled thinking that they should just be able to enter every group. I myself pretty much set my minimum requirements at about 2200. And that's because of two things. If you're at 2200, then I know you've at least completed the content already. And I know for a fact that you've put some time in to level your gear and your skills. Therefore, 2200 isn't too high of a number. If you are on the party board and you're looking for pre-made squads and those squads are higher than 2500, then pay them no mind because they're out of their minds thinking that people are going to be that high this early. And to make matters worse, you're out of your mind for thinking that everybody's going to be on the same page, consistently dropping their minimum requirements down to put you in or entitle the fact that you feel the need to be able to enter every group that you see on the party board. Play at your own pace, man. If you're not that high, then don't complain. Make your own group. If every new player has started to experience this and feeling the effects of pay to win, is the game really worth playing? And then you ask yourself, sure, I, I could play MMOs at my own pace. That's the entire point of an MMO. So I'm going to play it at my own pace. But the unfortunate thing is 99% of the good content in this game and the good gear in this game is locked behind having a somewhat decent guild. And even then, if you find a guild that seems to be active, they may not even be a good guild or they might not be an active guild. Dude. Okay, all right, all right, listen, listen, listen. Okay, I'm going to stop you right there, buddy, because you're going to give people the wrong impression and you're going to shoot them into space. None of the gear in this game is primarily locked behind you having to be in a guild. In fact, if you're in a guild, I would say that it's gaming inconvenience versus gaming on the grind. See, if you're not in a guild, which I'm pretty much not in a guild. I'm the only person in my guild. My guild is level four. It's a guild that I made, which by the way, if you guys want to join a guild and you happen to see this video, you're more than welcome to join my guild. I'm trying to level it up so I can get a core PVE team and a core PVP team. And I want to be able to sit there and eventually bring in newer players to kind of, you know, get them up to speed, yada, yada, yada. You know, it's going to be a primarily hardcore end game guild that's going to be able to bring newer players in and kind of get them into the grind and help them understand the, the core mechanics of the game and, and whatnot. So if you guys want a guild, I'm going to put the link to the discord in the description. Again, I'm the only one in there because I haven't put this information out there yet, but you guys are more than welcome to join the discord. Don't be toxic and don't be an asshole and you won't get kicked three strikes you're out rule. So listen back to what he was saying. None of the gear is locked behind you be needing to be in a good guild. The only thing that you get from being in a good guild is the convenience of getting gear faster. That's it. Because 90% of the gear that I have, I've gotten on my own from grinding open world dungeons, from grinding instance based dungeons, and from doing peace versions of the world bosses because I don't have a guild big enough to fight other guilds for conflict versions of those bosses. The gear is accessible to everybody regardless of how you play the game. The only difference is the pace at which you're going to get that gear is exponentially increased depending on whether or not you're in a guild or if you're swiping the card. That's the only difference, which is why I say the line, the, the very thick line between pay for convenience and pay for winning is very real. And you need to understand the difference between the two before you start throwing pay to win out there because you're going to give people the wrong impression and telling people that 99% of the gear is locked behind being in a guild is the wrong impression when that's not the case. It's just a convenience method. And even though most of the game is built with the idea of you being in a guild, you don't have to be in one to get the gear case in point. I'm the only one in my guild and I already am at a 2300 gear score because I'm just grinding. They, there's so many variables in this game and i think it's coming from the this is my opinion coming from the more western side of earth uh <laughs> talking about like united states and all that when i look at games like this i i look at lost ark the game i kind of had honeymoon phases with and i really enjoyed and i feel like it's almost deja vu like lost ark i love the characters love the game the gameplay was okay it felt good visually appealing cool bosses and i feel that with throne and liberty but now i'm hitting that phase where I, i'm starting to think my honeymoon 
phase with Throne of Liberty is slowly diminishing when you realize that most of the mid to late game, it's either farming blues for traits or spending money on the auction house for traits. Why would I farm blues for multiple hours when I could just spend two, three dollars on blues on the auction house and get my gear up in no time? I need y'all to look at me real quick and just, I, I need you to look at me and my 2020 vision that's double, that could be 40 40. Because I, I need you guys to understand this. This is a uh, astronomically bad take because you're mixing grind with pay for convenience. Let me break it to you down like this. When you get to end game, the highest tier of gear in the game varies depending on what game you're playing. If you go to Destiny, you have exotics. Those are very time consuming because they're not easy to get. Well, they are now because Bungie has no idea how to handle their loot tables, but previously gear was extremely hard to get. If you're playing something like The Division, gear is hard to get. If you're playing something like Lost Ark, gear is hard to get, but Lost Ark is more pay to win than Throne and Liberty will ever be. So let's, let's go over this briefly. When you get to the end game in Throne and Liberty, Throne and Liberty, has a high tier, which is purple, so far on the global version. I'm pretty sure there's going to be more dropping because there's no way they're going to just have purple for the entire game. It's an Eastern company. I'm pretty sure they're going to start dropping higher tiers that are going to require you to grind more content. That's just the way that it works. Here's the thing. When you get to the purple gear, you get your purple gear, your gear is leveled up. You have traits on that gear. In order for you to unlock those traits, you need to have trait stones, trait conversion stones, trait extraction stones, etc., etc. In order to level those traits, you need to have duplicate traits to infuse into that piece of gear to level up that trait, which means you're going to farm duplicate pieces of that gear with that trait to get that weapon or that piece of armor infused to max level traits. What he's saying is that if you don't feel like grinding blues, then you're forced to swipe the card to buy duplicates. You're not forced to do anything. You don't have to do anything. That is a pure choice. And as I look at the Lucent on your account, you're either selling duplicates to somebody else that's doing the exact same thing you're basically trying to jail everybody for, or you're buying duplicates and you're contradicting everything that you're just saying uh, that you just said right now. I'm sorry to be that guy, but it seems like you're running from the grind because you're mad that gear isn't dropping fast enough and you feel entitled. But I digress. Let's keep going. And I think this is just the first stage of this taking effect. I don't know if other people feel the same way, but I have now 238 hours into the game. I, I do work, so I can't play 24-7, so I know there's going to be people with a lot more hours than I do. After 200 hours, it feels the same as it did in the first 10 hours. And that's not necessarily bad. Sometimes that's really good for games, but I feel like it's going to be the same thing when it comes to the monotony of getting gear. You kind of get that dopamine mean of when you get a purple but then you realize you have to trade your purple and if your purple is from a world drop boss that only drops from your guild and your guild doesn't give you the item that drops even though you got stop 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 whoa 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 see there you go again with that only guild thing there are not bosses in the game in fact there's only two bosses in the entire game right now that i know of that are currently not active and that's because they're locked behind milestones on the global server and when they are active I think, what is it, Nurma? I think might be the only one that's actually guild locked. Every other boss in the game is a field boss that you can fight in the guild in your own instance once your guild is of level. So it's not locked behind the guild. I don't know who told you that. I don't know how you have 200 hours in the game and you still don't know this. But for one, to double, to, 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 to backtrack and double back to the, the trait stone uh, thing, the lithograph book exists, my guy. And um, I understand that I'm coming at you harsh, but I told you at the beginning, I'm very analytical and I'm going to call you out. The, 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 the lithograph book exists for a reason. You can take duplicates of items that you're not going to sell and put them in the lithograph book for materials in exchange. And all the way up at the bottom, if you open your eyes and you look, there's trade extraction stones down there. If you're farming gear the way that you sound like you're farming gear and you're getting purples that aren't purples that you need, then why are you not putting them in the lithograph book to get the trade extraction stones or the trade conversion stones or the trade stones in general so you can go ahead and just get the traits that you need? Then, on top of that, 
why are you complaining about your guild not giving you the gear when you knew what you were getting into when you got into the guild? Because you can see how the guild does their gear distribution once you complete a world boss. If that guild doesn't have the proper gear distribution that you're looking for, then change guilds. Because it sounds to me like you're in a guild that's going to tell you to spend Lucent whenever you can to get gear progression when you don't have to. About it because your guild wants to spread the Lucent to other people. How are you supposed to max out your world drops from bosses? And the reality of it is either spend money on the auction house and get the traits you need, maybe get lucky and get it to drop for yourself and have your guild give it to you, or you could boost your blessings with a bunch of blues and then infuse it into another blue. See, what people fail to understand, and I, I, don't, I don't think they're really thinking about this, is that if you get a duplicate piece of gear, you can trade that gear out, and if you happen to get the trait that you're looking for, you can infuse that into the gear that you have. Is it going to cost a lot of materials? Yes. But the game is not showering you in loot, and it's not meant to shower you in loot. If you're complaining about gear not dropping, then you're complaining about the grind. Now, could the grind be more optimal? 100%. I would implore that they actually figure out a way to increase the rewards that you get from grinding world bosses and whatnot, because you should get at least one guaranteed piece of gear from each tier just to make it more optimal for people that are not always able to grind with their gear, with their uh, guild. However, a lot of the videos so far, respectfully, I'm just going to have to decline a lot of the opinions because a lot of it is complaining about people spending money on the game. When in order for them to even be able to spend money on the game, one side has to swipe the card and the other side has to get the gear to sell it. Which it means at some point the grind was done and the healthy balance is, hey, I scratch my back, you scratch mine. I grind the gear, you buy it, I take the money, I buy something that I need. That's the cycle. That's what's happening. And that's happening outside of the main cycle. That is, somebody is still grinding the game no matter what. You're complaining about the grind part. Why are you complaining about the grind part when that's what's supposed to happen? You're supposed to grind the game. Quit running from the grind, man. If you're going to run from the grind, then go play something else. I'm sorry. However, I don't think you should be playing something else because I think you're right where you should be. You're just very impatient. Which, guess what, still costs more Lucent, which is the paid currency. Or, you can take the other route, where you would just get unlock your trait stones and then buy a bunch of blues. But once again, you're spending Lucent. Lucent. And yes, you can make Lucent for free, but you're actively holding back your progression. You're spending your time to get a premium currency to save you time. So are you really saving time? When alternatively... See, that's the wrong mindset. You're running into it thinking, oh, well, if I'm making Lucent, I'm extreme. I'm automatically using it to buy something that I need rather than just grinding out what I need and then using the Lucent for stuff that I want. See the difference? There's a difference between a need and a want. There's a difference between pay to win and pay for convenience. Everything that you're describing is pay for convenience. It's not pay to win. If you're grinding gear and you're selling the duplicates off, but you're selling the duplicates off so that you could buy an item that you need. That's your problem. That's that's a you problem. That's a, a poor judgment. That's poor financial management. If you're buying items from selling duplicates that you know for a fact you're going to need later, then that's just poor judgment. Like, if I need the Laquarius's daggers and I sell those off immediately to buy the crossbows, knowing darn well I needed those daggers, that's a me problem. I had the daggers in my hand. Why am I selling them? You have somebody else that is just swiping their credit card and getting the same benefits you are with none of the work. And I think that's where the problem lies. Even though I'm learning more about this game, I'm enjoying more about this game. See, the way that he's describing it is making it seem like somebody is sitting back with a bucket of Doritos and some nacho cheese just going, well, I got paid today. I'm just going to buy all the gear that I need. And then all of a sudden I'm at end game. That's not the way that this works. The grind is still there. You have to level the character. You have to do the activities. You have to get the duplicates of the gear first to even sit there and infuse your gear. Are there people that are buying duplicates from other players? Yes, because that player grinded that piece of gear. And if they did not need that piece of gear because it's not important to their build, then they're going to sell it instead of just dismantling it for trash. It's a healthy system that balances both sides of the field. You have people that are buying for convenience because they don't want to grind in that area anymore because they've probably grinded for days on end 
And then you have people that have been grinding and are still grinding for the gear that they want that are getting duplicates that other people need and they're selling it off, making money to buy skins and battle passes and premium level passes that they want. And in exchange, everybody is getting what they want. You're complaining purely about the fact that you're not getting max level gear because the gear that you want is not dropping at the pace that you want. And you feel like in order to get that gear, you have to go out of your way to buy the duplicates when that's not even the case. I would implore that you get your mindset off of Lucent and start focusing on the more important things. If I don't get this piece of gear that I want, but I get this, let me sell this for Lucent and just buy everything that I want skins wise. If I happen to see a duplicate of the item that I need, but the trait that I want, I'll pick it up. I got the Lucent. I can make more because I can sell off the duplicates in the game to get the Lucent back. I, you're making it a, a very difficult for me to understand your angle when everything that you're talking about is the fact that you feel entitled to drops that aren't dropping to you because your guild is mismanaged and gear is not dropping at the pace that you want because the game is not destiny and it's not showering you in loot the second you walk through the door. To the point where I'm probably saying I'm more knowledgeable now than I was a week ago, which is a good thing. I'm learning. I'm starting to see the cracks in the facade. I'm starting to see why people kind of were turned off at this game initially. And I'm definitely starting to see the more pay-to-win aspects. And going back on Shroud a little bit, how he mentioned the pay-to-win isn't that bad. I mean, sure, the pay-to-win isn't too bad compared to like Lost Ark or something. But pay-to-win existing within a game that isn't bad is still bad. This is coming from somebody I know this probably going to make 14,000 people click off right now. This is coming from somebody that loves New World, and I love the combat in New World. I like the PvP in New World, and I recently went back to New World to turn them, and it made me realize why I liked New World so much. Yes, it lacked content, and it still lacks content, and it lacks endgame, but one thing that game does better, and I think will always do better than Throne of Liberty could ever do, is when you're in PvP, when you're in combat, or when you're getting gear, you feel rewarded for your time. When I knew it. I knew that's where he was going. I knew it. He immediately jumped to PvP. You want to know why I know this is where that entire video came from? It's because he was probably playing, uh, play, playing PvP, and the core function of PvP is horrible. I don't care what anybody tells you. The amount of stuns and CCs in PvP that you cannot break out of is horrid. It is horrible. And that needs to be fixed. Because there is no possible way that a tank should be eating all this damage and then stunning you back to back to back to back to back. But that's not a gear problem. That's a core function design flaw. That's something that devs need to take a look at and say, why are there so many avenues to sleep stun somebody and not enough to CC break? That's not a gear and progression problem. You can have maxed out gear <laughs> and still get dumped on because you're not running a sleep build, because you're not actively stunning people. That is a core PVP function issue. That's not a pay for convenience or pay to win issue. When I go to Throne and Liberty and I spend so much time on something, I do not feel rewarded for my time whatsoever. And not being rewarded for your time in an MMO, I think is a flawed system for an MMO. And see, that draws back to the entitlement of thinking that because you did something, you're supposed to get gear. This is exactly what I was saying earlier. You're impatient, man. Like, it's clear that you enjoy the game. And it's clear that you're dedicated to learning the craft about Throne and Liberty. We're all new, including myself. And I can definitely confidently say that I don't know everything about Throne and Liberty. I'm still learning new stuff day in and day out. But what I can tell you is that you, sir, term, are extremely impatient. You are. Because thinking that you're supposed to feel rewarded for every single PvP match is like walking around thinking that because you participated in everything, you're supposed to get an award. This is not a participation award. It, life is not a game where you just, oh, well, I'm so glad my baby went out there and did what he did. Here, have a cookie. That's not the way that it works. You played PvP, you got your ass beat, you took the L, you go home, you go again. You win, you get your rewards, you go, you take the W, you, you restart, you go over, you do it again. If gear doesn't drop, gear didn't drop. If it dropped, it dropped. If you didn't need it, you sell it. If you need it, you use it. That's it's simple. It's a very healthy system. The problem, and I'm going to put this out there for everybody. The problem, the real problem the people are having is that we are on the gray zone where a lot of new titles are dropping and a lot of old titles are getting rotated out. And because of that, 
they're basically running around complaining that the game doesn't have content when they're coming from games that have had 10 years of content that expand on avenues that drop different ways for you to get gear for you to sell, which makes it a lot easier for you to gear. The game just dropped. It doesn't have 10 years worth of content for you to delve into and get a bunch of gear and sell it off. It will over time, but it just dropped. Stop being impatient and play at your own pace and stop feeling so entitled thinking that because you spent money on the game or because you're playing the game and you you made it to end game, the gear is just going to drop and land on your feet. Are you going to get mad when you do content endlessly and you don't get what you want? Yes, I get mad, but don't get entitled and don't immediately throw pay to win at the wall because you're pocket watching. Stop pocket watching and get back to the grind. MMO. Could you pay to win a New World or any other MMO and buy gold on G2G? Yeah, obviously you could. But I think Throne and Liberty is even worse. People are paying $2,000 for a freaking sword. Dude, a sword? If I was- He's not wrong. The prices are astronomically high, but that's that's a story for a different day. I'm gonna buy a $2,000 sword, that shit better be delivered to my front doorstep with a hooker that's gonna give me a blowy, because there is no way I am buying a $2,000 virtual sword that's probably not even going to be good in the next four to five months when new content comes to the game. And the people out there defending the fact that you can buy $1,000 weapons and it's part of the game and it's something that you don't have to do, but people are actively doing it, honestly could lick a boot, okay? I'm gonna say it politely so I don't get demonetized, but anyone out there defending the fact that buying a two thousand dollar sword is actually a really good deal because it's really hard to obtain and you have to go do this and this and you have to get a guild world drop and a, a fairy dust bro i do not care i do not care at all so what does that mean for me what does that mean for my opinions on the future of my content in the game well maybe this is going to be another one of those videos where i just vent and i'm completely wrong about the pay to win but from my knowledge and everything i know about the game there is no way in god's green earth or even somebody that works from home virtually and plays on their other monitor could keep up with people that are spending even the smallest amounts of money you could spend 10 20 dollars and skip hours of grinding you could spend 50 dollars and skip days of grinding so when i and see again that's pay for convenience it's not pay to win and on top of that again it's not because people are swiping their cards they're getting these days and hours of progression it's because the game just came out and there's not enough avenues of content for people to go out and get all of this gear and progression during the day because if this game had 10 years of content on it like warframe then the pay to win conversation would be completely different people wouldn't even be complaining they'd be running around trying to figure out the fastest way to make lucent right now but the game had only just come out and it doesn't have 10 years worth of content on it. So when you look at it from this angle and it's like, well, shoot, if I didn't get lucky enough to get drops in my three dungeons that I ran today, then obviously the guy who bought the duplicate is going to get extreme progression because he doesn't have to run the three dungeons tomorrow. As more content drops out and more avenues to get gear drops, the progression bar is going to get exponentially increased because more people are going to be able to gear out faster and the minimum threshold of entry for end game and considering yourself geared is going to get lowered because right now the threshold to being geared is just getting from blue to purple and then getting to max gear is getting to traits when more gear drops and more avenues of getting those gear drops uh are available it's going to get lowered to once you get to purple you are max geared and then once you get to max traits or you get this certain item you are end game geared and that bar is going to continuously get lower and lower to the point where it's like warframe we're just getting to level 50 or just getting through the main campaign you're already an end game and then just getting all of your weapons and stuff is getting you end game geared Right now, getting to end game is getting purple gear, and it's hard as hell to do that because it's only locked behind certain avenues and there's not enough avenues in the game. It's not pay to win, it's pay to convenience because right now, the game is not convenient in any way and is not making it any easier until more content drops. However, the gear is accessible to everybody regardless of what you do. The convenience is whether or not you're swiping the card or joining a guild. That's what it is. It's not pay to win, it's pay for convenience. And I think people need to understand the difference between the two. And I think people for sure need to not be so entitled to think that because you're playing the game, gear is just supposed to shower. 
That's not the way that it works, man. Hell, I'm looking at you right now, and you got skill books galore. You got all of these marine stones. You got the enchanted inks to sell a bunch of equipment. You got extraction stones. You got dew drops for your mastery gear. You have way more gear than the average player. You have 5,000 guild tokens, 3,000 loosened from selling gear. There is no complaints you should be making right now because judging just off of your storage and your currency inventory, you're leaps and bounds ahead of 90% of the global population. I go into that and I reflect, maybe New World is something that's making me feel this way. When I reflect compared to other MMOs, I think with Throne and Liberty at its current moment, I'm going to maybe slow down a bit. I don't know if I'm going to quit it, but I'm going to slow down. I was trying to be competitive. I was trying to play as much as I can. I was trying to learn as much as I can, as quick as I can to provide some half decent content for my viewers on the channel. And see, that's what it was right there. Exactly what I said. You're moving too fast, man. And because you're moving so fast, you expect everything to drop at like 0.2 seconds of a hat for you. That's not the way that the game works. That's not the way that a traditional MMO works. I'm not going to say that this is a traditional MMO because by any means, it's probably not a traditional MMO, but it's getting very close to it. And with a couple of adjustments, some nerfs in some other areas, some balance tweaks and some content, we're, we're cooking. But right now, as it stands, you're on the island of entitlement all on your own buddy because right now the game isn't moving fast enough for your liking and because of that you're calling it pay to win when it's not but let's continue and i tried my best to do that but i still feel like no matter what i try to do or what me and my friends try to do it just ends up being the same thing over and over you have to do this you have to spend loosen you have to spend loosen oh it's the whole community that's their answer even with the guild i'm in it's spend your loosen make sure you spend your loosen for better gear so with the lack of free to play friendliness i just think it's probably my time to step away but let me know do you guys feel the same way am i just alone with my yip yapping but yeah that's the current state of throne and liberty and it's pay to win and why i think it's probably not gonna last long on the western market but yeah that's the video that's rant termex and uh yeah i'll see you all later oh boy oh buddy turn man i i uh hey man i like you i do maybe one day we could talk you know because again i mean no harm but boy oh boy do you need some lessons in patience because <laughs> you expect everything to drop in like two seconds man and when it doesn't happen and you see somebody else swipe for a duplicate for a build that they're building, you immediately go, oh, pay to win. Somebody sound the alarms. We got a 2319 like that. Dog, that's not the way that this works, man. Grind. And when you don't feel like grinding, take a break. Go play something else. It's not meant for you to play every day, all day. That's why they give you dimensional tokens and abyssal tokens, because they don't want you on the game. Hell, if you stay on the game long enough, they will give you a notification in world chat that tells you you've been playing for too long. Take a break. Term, I'm afraid that you've been ignoring your notifications. You've been playing for too long. Take a break. Because, <laughs> buddy, you're the only person that I know running around that's having these kinds of issues. Because most of everybody else is playing at their own pace. Like, that's just, it's that simple. So, again, I need you to understand that there's a very thin line, a thick line, between pay to win and pay for convenience. This game is heavy on the pay for convenience in the early global launch because there's no 10 years of built up content in the game that can give you multiple different avenues to gain gear progression it's really just dungeons abyssal contracts and guild runs and open world field bosses and then farming regular enemies solo content doesn't do it there is no multiple different avenues of dungeons and, and raids and whatnot that you could do with the lfg system it's just five different activities and two of them are locked behind time gates, and the other three are just heavily dependent on RNG and whether or not you're in a guild. And because you're burning through all of those in two seconds, the game is now pay to win for you because you feel like every single move you make, you have to swipe the card because you're impatient and you're not playing at your own pace. You're trying to keep up with everybody else that's had months and months upon the game already. So I tell you this, take a break. You've been playing for too long. Hey. It's my full opinion, and I respectfully decline your entire opinion, but you can respectfully decline my entire opinion because at the end of the day, it is an opinion, and I, I wouldn't blame you for your hot takes either. But, you know, hey, maybe you want to talk. We can talk all day long. I don't care because I like yapping. But 
look, that's been my opinion. That's been my hot take. I think that he's completely wrong here because I think that he's more focused on thinking that things are supposed to shower him in loot because he did the activity rather than understanding the core function of the game and the I scratch your back, you scratch mine system. So that that's it's a it's two it's two sides of a dumb street. You know, you got one side that feels that everything is entitled and the other side that's complaining about everything else. It's just it's weird, man. But like I said, I'm the only one in my guild. So if you guys want to join, I'm going to put the link to the discord in the description. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure you leave a like. Make sure you subscribe if you're not part of the channel already. And I'll catch you guys on the next video. Take care.